I would like to tell you about this uh, classroom shared drawing system that has been developed at the University of Southern Denmark. The system should be used to getting additional feedback from students during a lecture, or that's the intended usage of the, the system. So the, the typical way of, of getting feedback from students in a classroom would be to pose questions to the students, so who can tell me about uh, Pythagoras theorem or whatever topic we are, are working with uh, right now. Some students might know it quite well and raise their hands and are keen to to share their, their thoughts and some of the other students might have no clue about what we actually uh, the, the question should be about and so on. And the issue on, on only talking with a single student or discussing this with a single student is that there will be a lot of blind spots about the rest of the class's understanding of, of this issue. So the teacher poses a question to the class, a single student is selected to answer this uh, question and finally the teacher is able to adapt his teaching based on, on the given answer. And this is actually a quite limited uh, flow of, of information especially from the students and back to the teacher and this might be this can be increased uh, in, in different ways uh, one often used approach is to use multiple choice questions where you list up a, a set of um, uh, possible answers a b c or d for instance and then the student should select among these uh, do I think the correct answer is A, B, C, or D? And um, some students might have a clear idea of this is of course A or this is of course C, and some might be in doubt about um, what the, the answer should be uh, to the question. So here the, the teacher poses a single question but gets uh, multiple answers, but of very limited uh, content uh, that as all the the answers are either A, B, C, or D. Um, and the benefit of, of doing this is that you get answers from a lot of students uh, simultaneously. And the type of these answers are so that they can be combined or condensed um, in, a, in an easy way so the teacher can see, okay, how many percent answered A, how many percent answered B and C and D and so on. And based on that, the teacher can adjust the, the teaching uh, to whatever um, the, the teacher wants. And this is the, the, the case for what is known as peer instruction that was uh, introduced by Eric Masur. And here he uses a concept test or multiple choice test. And depending on the amount of correct um, answers, a percentage of correct answers from the students. Um, he chooses to do one of, of three things. If more than 70% of the students have answered the question correctly, he just proceeds to a new uh, topic and goes on with that. If um, between 30 and 70% of the students were correct in the answer to the concept test, he asks the students to discuss the question with a peer um, preferably one that has a different answer than the one they choose themselves. And after a short discussion, they take a new concept test and then it hopefully has increased the amount of uh, correct so he can proceed with, with a new topic. And in the case where less than 30% of the students um, got the concept set, got the question right on the concept test, uh, he revises the topic and then it takes a new concept test about the same uh, topic and repeats the cycle uh, for as much as, as as many times as possible during the, the available time. One of the issues using a, a system like this is you have to create answers or plausible uh, answers or choices um, and that can be quite difficult to do. Um, also because these questions usually should uh, pinpoint some uh, of the typical student misunderstandings that are present in this uh, curriculum. 
and this is the time consuming task and is definitely not possible to invent on the spot. Uh, in the class, you need to have prepared this uh, previously. So at one point I started to wonder if it was possible to use images, uh, that is a more rich type of answer instead of these uh, multiple choice uh, answers that was used for, for peer instruction. And it might work and it might give a lot of headache if, if you try to do this. So if you pose a question to the students or an open question to the students like draw a house, um, the students might have very different uh, ideas about how does a house look and how should we draw it. And even if they agree on what is a house, from what point of view should, should this be drawn. So you risk getting a, a mess of 2D and 3D images uh, or sketches uh, put on top of each other with uh, different alignments and so on. And it can be really difficult to, to decipher whatever is taking place inside this image. That was a fear. But we might be able to, to mitigate this issue by providing the students some kind of uh, scaffold or template. Uh, to guide what they are drawing. So they are not drawing on a completely white surface, but they have some uh, um, some structure to draw on top of. Um, and we can provide that by giving the students an image they should draw on top of. For instance, this image where we have uh, two optical media and the students is they supposed to draw a line from A to B or to drive the, the path of light from A to B, uh, taking into consideration that um, light moves faster in air than in water. Um, so, um, and then they can try to, to draw this uh, light path in here and, and the teacher get an understanding of, of how the, the students uh, understand or able to, to deal with the, with the topic. As an example, compared to, to the questions that was posed to the students earlier, then here it would be to draw a function um, given this equation and also to provide the students with this kind of uh, template, in this case a, a coordinate system where they can draw the system or draw the, the equation uh, within. And here we can see that all the students have a different idea of how this function should look like. Some are maybe more correct than, than others, or some are more correct than, than others. But if we only look get feedback from a single student, we will miss the, uh, the diversity of, of the class understanding of, of this topic. So the system I suggest and uh, we have implemented is to push some kind of template to the students along with a question and then see how all the students are answering uh, this uh, question uh, by, by drawing these lines. And finally, we can uh, summarize it somehow by stacking all these um, images on top of each other, which gives the, the teacher a, a quite good idea about what the class thinks about something and can adjust the, the teaching based on that and go on with the teaching. Um, one of the things we tried in, in class were to show the students the, the joint answer after the entire class have answered a question, then they can could uh, see, okay, did I answer the same as, as the rest of the class? Was that correct? And how much uh, off for the class and, and so on. Well, that gave some quite nice moments in, in the class. So a few experiences from a, a first year mathematics class is, is given here. For this, uh, um, this is actually a screenshot from the, uh, the teacher view of, of the classroom shared drawing system, where we have this uh, canvas that was pushed to the students. And here we can see all the student responses uh, that have been received <coughs> drawn on top of this um, this canvas or template. 
and the question that was posed to the student was to draw this line um, 0 0.5 times x minus 1 which is uh, the line given here and most part most of the students were able to draw this uh, correctly and a few one um, missed some elements of this maybe a minus or different uh, things that that was that went wrong um, but in general they, they had a quite good idea about drawing this equation then i asked them to uh, draw a new line and uh, some of the students started to, to play with this with the system and uh, draw funny faces and whatever uh, there might be a issue with a mouse that got stuck and something like that but they still had the, the proper idea of, of what sh what should be done here and in this template I added my own uh, line from the previous exercise and then the next step would be to find the intersection between these two lines and we also have the option of, of looking at all the individual responses from the students and see okay the student how would had uh, he or she uh, solved the problem and one had put in um, helping points before drawing the, the line which worked uh, quite well I also tried to push some more advanced questions to the students this way um, there is a question here about how uh, to dilute um, a colorful mixture um, in water where you pour water into the system and tap out an uh, equal amount of, of the mixture and by doing this uh, the amount of uh, substance will decrease over time or decay over time inside this uh, beaker and we asked the students to draw these uh, amount of substance or concentrations how they change over time and provided two um, data points that that the, their curve should uh, go through uh, to make them as similar as possible and for one of the, the questions uh, the students uh, showed lines like this which gives the, uh, a quite nice uh, representation some of the students draw uh, straight lines that ended up having negative concentrations this is not that uh, physical to, to have a negative concentration of, uh, of salt ions or some other kind of um, of molecules um, and other students saw that it decayed fast initially and then uh, slowly uh, um, stabilized around uh, zero and other uh, aspects of, of this we continue this um, where instead of having a single beaker as we had before now we connect the first beaker as we looked at before with a second beaker of the same volume and so on and uh, then repeated this process but instead of pouring pure water into this beaker uh, it was the mixture from the first beaker that was pushed over to, to beaker 2 and then the volume was kept constant in beaker 2 by pouring out a, a fixed amount of, of water from, from here and the task was then to, to draw uh, the concentration uh, of amount in in uh, the second beaker uh, over time just as the answer from from the first beaker was was drawn in in the template that was pushed to the students and this gave this image as, as output and we had a lot of things to talk about in class uh, based on, on this quite many of the students thought that um, all the amount of, of substance would end up in in the second beaker um, here even if we put uh, more or less uh, pure water throughout the, the entire system and I was able to, to talk with the students in, in class and say okay why would someone draw lines like this and then uh, an answer would be that okay we didn't realize that uh, the mixture was um, taken out of, of the second beaker and then this makes quite good sense and we have a few students that actually provided the, the correct solution that started the proper point and ended up uh, being close to zero because it was just being washed out at, at the end a few different examples are related to the 
the concept of initial value problems or differential equations. Um, and here we have a exponential decay, decay that should look something like this. And we're given the differential equation and an initial point marked uh, on the on the plot. And then they should draw on. And then they should draw these lines. And um, this time it didn't look that well. Uh, I provided them with a coordinate system, and they more or less had no clue about what was taking place here. Um, so we revisited the, the topic and talked about okay, how to approach this issue. And then uh, I could push a new question to the students because it was just to choose a new differential equation and give them more or less the, the same template as before and just indicate a, a new point uh, it should go through. And then we could see, okay, how will, will the student perform? And this is what the correct solution should be. And this is what uh, the students uh, provided me as, as feedback. And I can see that here the students got a much better idea of what this actually was about than uh, previously. So I get a kind of rich feedback from the students when using this system. Some feedback from the students was that they were quite happy about seeing others' answers to uh, questions. Um, they also valued it was anonymous. Um, that I, as a teacher, was able to gain information from the entire class instead of only talking with a few students um, to get a sense of how much they, they understood. And they found it easy to, to use. It was just to open their website, and then they were already logged into the system, and, and everything was, was working. And a few things that the students would like to improve were that um, there should be a kind of eraser tool in the system, which is not, not present right now. And the student should uh, stop playing with the system, draw silly faces and, and other things in, in images. And that would be a, a question about how to, yeah, how to, to learn the student to actually use the system in, in a proper way uh, for dealing with this. If this is of interest to you and you would like to either experiment with the system or you have uh, further questions about the system, please contact me by this uh, mail address and then I would uh, like to, to answer these questions. Good. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.